It had spines too. So what's the deal here? Here it's just a, a table, and bear with me on this, but it's quite interesting what it shows. I took collections from the mid Silurian, Waldron, and Rochester shales, and I simply tallied up the number of crinoids that we know to have been hosting snails. Not sure about that one, to be honest, but uh, it's a nice picture. Uh, but these are uh, crinoids where they're definitely having snails, this is a cystoid, uh, on them. And the same I did with the Devonian. Here's the total number of genera or types of crinoids, 26. But what I simply want to point out, all of these share a common feature. They have a flat area where the snails could attach. But what's different, and this is the same in both Silurian and Devonian, they have this tegment or flat area where they could rest. What's different is, look here, the number of spines, none, none, none in the Silurian. And so, host crinoids, none of them are spiny in the Silurian. Non-host crinoids, none of them spiny in the Silurian either. Big deal. Look at the Devonian, middle Devonian, a big deal. Host crinoids, six out of nine known genera to be host, hosting these snails, had spines on them. It's a pretty high percentage. The non-hosts were still not spiny. Wow, that's an interesting little factoid. What does it mean? Here's what I think it means. I make this silly phrase, the devil's in the pea snails. To make it rhyme with, you know, the old, uh, old adage, the devil's in the detail. The devil's in the pea snails. The devil's in the platycerid snails. Why? I hypothesize targeting. Crinoids hosted these snails happily, maybe not so happily, for a long time. The spines did not keep them off in the Devonian. That's clear. The spiniest crinoids are the very ones that have the most snails on that have the snails on them. And most of the, sna the crinoids that had snails had spines. What I think was going on is targeting. I already said crinoids aren't that delectable, perhaps. But put a snail on top of a crinoid and you're putting a bullseye on that crinoid, oh, I say. The presence of escargot made crinoids victims in the Devonian. And since prior to this time, you had nothing really that could swim up and bite at them. Cephalopods probably wouldn't do this. They were vulnerable all of a sudden because fish had evolved. So you have a really interesting potential three-way interaction between the snails that were sitting there eating on poop the crinoids, which were doing their thing, and maybe not liking the snails too much, but not you know, being too terribly harmed. And the predators, which aren't shown here. Uh, this is a, a, a funny old cartoon from my uh, one of my advisors at Michigan, Bob Kessling. He, he liked to put these funny little things in. Anyway, yeah, he was a great guy. And uh, he's trying to pry that snail off. Snails didn't get pried off, and besides that, they put a target on the host, I think. And that's why the, the crinoids with snails got spiny. The test for this is still being done. Uh, uh, another former student, some of you remember, Forrest Gone and Tom Baumiller from Michigan, started to look at the frequency of repairing of bite marks in crinoids. And guess what? Those who have snails on them show a higher frequency. I don't have any numbers here, but it needs to be further investigated. There's an independent way of testing this hypothesis. And so far, it looks pretty good. The crinoids with snails did get bitten more than was those without. So summing things up then, this is a famous diagram from another colleague, uh, now sadly gone, Jack Sapkowski, who showed that through uh, the time of the Phanerozoic, you know, on the, the last half billion years of, geolo of geologic time, there were sort of three great faunas. The Cambrian faunas, which came and to a degree went also in the Cambrian, they declined gradually, but uh, uh, they were very dominant, trilobites, some kinds of brachiopods, and we could throw anomalocaris in the mix, of course. The Paleozoic fauna, which isn't just uh, Ordovician, but sort of characteristic of the late part, later parts of the Paleozoic, with crinoids and bracts, things like that, and the predators, cephalopods and sea stars. And the modern fauna, which although it's called modern, started to creep in with the green line showing here, already in the Ordovician. And that includes particularly things like the jawed, fishes which start to accelerate, although maybe not as well shown as it could be, in the Devonian time. So let's take a look. Predation starts with the Cambrian, and we already have some stereotyped predators around that could go after trilobites and do some damage. They seem to have largely gone out at the end of the Cambrian, although some other worms and things made it through. 
by the uh, time we get the Paleozoic fauna coming in in the Ordovician period, there are a host of new kinds of predators around, but they're mostly invertebrates. Sea stars, well, let's go to this better picture. Sea stars, trilobites, and maybe soft body predators, uh, cephalopods. Not much in the way of fish yet, little eat, eat micro predators, perhaps some conodonts animals, but uh, nothing too. But when we get to the Devonian, the middle part of the Paleozoic, we have this revolution, especially of vertebrate predators like the sharks, cartilaginous fish, not birds yet, of course, uh, and, uh, uh, and other things that were beginning to impact uh, organisms much to a much greater extent. This radiation of predators that occurred right there in the middle Paleozoic may have had a very strong influence on a lot of things. And of course, uh, uh, not only was it, uh, is it documented by greater frequency of predation marks, but indirectly perhaps by all of these kinds of spikes and spines and other things I didn't really have time to talk about, thicker shells and so on. Here's Dunkelosteus rearing his ugly and slicing head. And here are uh, potential uh, prey of, of, not necessarily Dunkelosteus, but of, of the, the, the new rise of fish predators. And all a lot of these different ones are showing some evolution of defensive adaptations, perhaps, in response to this rise. And that was the Paleozoic. And things, as I say, to end off, things just got tougher in the Mesozoic marine revolution. But that's another story. Thanks very much. Steve, you don't think that uh, this was going on in Cincinnati and it just took longer in evolution to start developing these finds? I have uh, crinoid stands where almost all the crinoids are gone. And a lot of the stems have chisel marks on them and the surviving snails in these fossil gardens have shell repair. Interesting. I, there, there may have been other things. As I said, I, I don't. I wouldn't have thought cephalopods would go up after a crinoid cup, but it's possible. Or phylicarids, perhaps, a <coughs> few arthropods. It was a sea without fish, but no, it doesn't mean there weren't some predators. But I would guess, if, if that's true, it was a, a much less common event than it is later. I have them from numerous locations. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what some of those are simply snapped off physically, too. So, I mean, they may have been the but result it of... it seems like the two was associations <coughs> are together. The yeah, but part. you've got to remember that crinoids and a lot of echinoderms, when put under stress, do a very odd thing. Instead of just hunkering down, they throw pieces of their body away. They autotomize in response to stress. So various kinds of stress could result in death and uh, uh, mutilation, self-mutilation of crinoids. So, yeah, I'm not denying that it could be predators around. Obviously, I think there were, but uh, I think this is a, a real reason that fish, that well, fish too, but uh, crinoids, snails, racks, and so on, all are suddenly showing up in trial bites. There has been a uh, paper that was done on stuff that was collected at the Route 8 site mm -hmm. where they have regeneration. Mm -hmm. And there's snails in that site Interesting. Well, but I haven't had a chance to look at the snails. But in this I case, if, if it were a predator doing what I would suggest they do is targeting the snails. They didn't take, get the snails. You're right, that's right. what I'm thinking, but I haven't looked at the snails yet. They supposedly collected quite a few, but they claim a whole of them, mm -hmm. which may well turn out to be maticanemus. And I, I have them on crinoids. Interesting. So I'd be interested in seeing these. They're in a local uh, university. Uh, I'm hoping for a chance this year to look at them. One of the other tests we want to make, by the way, is to look at the platycerate snails themselves, which we know most, many of them were up on the crinoids, and see what the frequency of repair marks in those snails might be. And you might have some of those that got bitten and survived. And uh, no one's ever looked at that. But that should be looked at right back to cycling. I haven't seen any as yet. No. I've looked at quite a few. That's yes, well, um, I have one question about the, uh, the, the, the techniques that to avoid being a prey. Uh, you know, there, I can see lots of things that aren't going to show up in the fossil record. Well, like uh, you know, prey get, starts moving fast, or they start getting camouflaged, change their lifestyle. Yep. All these things are going to be hard to harder harder to, harder to document. There are a few. There's some others, but beyond what I talked about here, but that can be documented. But I mean, you have to stick with what you can see. Right. 
you're, you're very, very well be right that perhaps the first line of defense was chemical or something like that to, to, to keep things off. And then as the predation intensified, uh, thick shells and spikes. But do you remember there's one little thing I left unexplained, and that is there's a drop off actually in the spinosity towards the end of the Paleozoic. And uh, Chris Mables, uh, uh, another colleague, had worked on these things, and he suggested that the spines were only effective up to a point, and then predators got bigger, they could handle the spines, and they were no longer uh, effective. And so what you're getting is other types of defenses. Uh, spines may have had their day, and they may not be. Snails on them, more 